Hi everyone, this is a bit of a different video. So, here in front of me I have a turbo. This could be out of a, uh, well I'll tell you the engine, it's a 1.6 litre uh, turbo diesel. It's in a lot of cars. Even today I think the engine's still made. Anyway, the engine might be called 1.6 TDCI or it might be called 1.6 HDI. It's a French engine, uh, actually designed by PSA. Uh, so yeah, here's the turbo. It's a Garrett GT15, I think it's 1544, but I'm not too sure. And this turbo is prone to failing on uh, on the Ford Focus anyway, maybe some other ones, Ford Focus Mark II. Maybe some other cars as well it fails, I don't know. And I'm going to show you, I'm quite proud of this actually, but I'm going to show you how to fix this thing so it never goes wrong again. However, there is a price, there is a cost. So, in order to make this thing reliable, you have to gut it. The good thing about gutting it is that it can't fail again. The bad thing is that you don't get the performance. Basically, it's just not in use anymore. Now, the thing is, though, if you do repair it, you can still get the same problem again uh, within about 30 miles. So what actually happens on, on the Ford Focus anyway, I don't know about other cars, what happens is that the engine gets clogged um, and the oil feed here, which lubricates the, the middle piece here, it gets hot. It doesn't get lubricated properly and it wrecks the bearings then as oil is pumped in it passes one of the seals it either goes into the intake and then and then basically the air that goes into the engine gets polluted with oil or it goes onto the outtake outtake whatever it's called and then it goes into the exhaust and gets burnt off causing black smoke either way it's bad because you're losing engine oil Anyway, I repaired this using a proper kit and it didn't work. And I don't know why it didn't work, but quite frankly, I don't care because, um, well, I'm past caring. I just want a car that works, it's reliable. I don't care about the turbo and I don't care about the performance. And therefore, I decided that I would just gut it. Now, if you look at websites and stuff, it says you can't do it, but I disagree. You definitely can do it, and I know that because I've done it. Uh, and I've been running my car for about a thousand miles or something like that. It definitely works. So, if any of you are sick of dealing with this turbo problem, this is how to fix it. You simply gut the turbo and blank it off, and then you don't have a turbo anymore, but you also don't get oil leaks, and it doesn't fail anymore. So, I'm going to show you how to do it. So there's the turbo, <coughs> first of all, you might need to put it in a vise, I'm not because uh, I only hand tightened these a few days ago. So by the way, you might be thinking, well, if it works so good, why are you messing with it now? And the reason I'm messing with it now is because I tried to repair it the proper way, just have a turbo again, and it just didn't work, it failed straight away. So there's no point, I'll just gut it and put it back to the way I've been uh, using it, because then I know it's, it's going to work, I'm not going to break down anywhere. And blah 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 so so let's start so the first thing you'll need to do is be sure that you have the banjo bolt which is here take the banjo bolt off which at this point you would have already taken it off anyway if you've got this far so we've got the turbo off there's the banjo bolt you can probably put this in a vise but I'm not going to do that so we just start dismantling the thing let's go from here this is an 8 mil so um, undo these <coughs> they might be a bit tight as you can see the bolts on mine are quite new but on yours they might not be but they will come just get it in a vise or something and be a bit brutal with it and they, they will come out so there's one I can't remember how many of these there are but <coughs> take that one out yeah this is a bit different to my normal videos about electronics but uh Really, my electronic videos are the, are the same sort of thing, really. It's about saving money and stuff. I mean, this job, really, I think... I could be wrong, but I, I think it's worth about £500 to get your, get your turbo fixed. 
you know, and I've got better things to spend £500 on than, than a, a car that, <coughs> quite frankly, doesn't need to be speeding anyway. And if, it, if I do speed, or if I'm inclined to speed, then I'm probably going to get a fine, so... <coughs> So it may as well go. We're not going to need this anymore either. This this is the actuator. So you may as well take that off and put it to one side because you're not going to use it anymore. <coughs> well, if you're following this video, you're not anyway. So you might be thinking, well, if I go to all this work here, taking the turbo off, it might not work. Surely, you know, the car is designed to have a turbo. Well, it is designed to have a turbo, but this does work. Because uh, like I said, I've done a thousand miles or something on it. It does work. It looks like it's going to be time to take these off. Um, this way. <sighs> so take this off. <coughs> this is the actuator, which uh, it connects something mechanically inside, which basically turns the turbo on or connected up or whatever. Let's take this off now. And there we go. So we've taken that off. We don't want to damage the thing though because we are going to need it. Yeah, look at that, it's full of oil straight away. It's not. It's done about 10, 20 miles. Although that's spinning freely, which is interesting. But there you go. There's a bit of play there. Which is really annoying because it's brand new. But anyway. Let's keep taking things off. Uh, as a seal, make sure we don't lose that. Oh, that's tight. Take these off. Come on, take all this off. So in a minute we're going to expose the, I think it's called the spindle. Let's see, come on, come on. So we're stripping this <coughs> right down. Almost done. Yeah, so when I first did this a long time ago, it was a nightmare to get these bolts out. But I put in a vice, I heated it up, I clacked it with a hammer on the head of the bolt, and eventually it became loose. <sighs> eventually, it became loose, and uh, I was able to take it off. You're gonna come off now. This one's a little bit difficult. Can I get it with my hand? Yeah, I can. When this actuator's off, it'll be a bit easier to deal with as well. Come on. Yeah, there's an awful lot of oil on there. There shouldn't be that much oil on this turbo. Come on. Yeah, so I still don't know, don't know exactly how this has happened, but, and there it is, there's the, there's the stuff, look. That will actually pull, that will actually pull off and uh, you can lose the pieces. So, when this engages, these little fins stick out there. Interesting design. Anyway, so we've taken that off. <coughs> this is called the core, I believe. Yeah, it's annoying because it's actually spinning quite nicely. There is quite a lot of play, though. Yeah, there's quite a lot of play. It's annoying because it's brand new. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be loose, but, uh, but it is. It's clearly oil seeping into this. Which is not supposed to do. Okay. <coughs> We're going further. So, now oh, this has got to come off. I, I think this might. Oh, it's an 8mm. Okay. This is the way you don't expect it to be. So, if I tighten it this way, it actually loosens it. So, I'll just hold on to this here. And let it come. Oh, it's tight.
<sighs> got it. Yeah, so I'll pretend that I'm tightening it, I'm actually loosening it. There we go. And then here, take this off. Now that won't that won't tap through yet. Next I need Torx keys it looks like. Okay, that's gonna have to be end of part one while I go and get them. Alright, so I've got the, the Torx key now. Let's undo this. Again, the first time I did this, it was a nightmare, they just wouldn't come out. I ended up having to grind a slot into one of them to get it out. Anyway, undo these. These little bolts. As you can see, these are new as well. Yeah, a failed service. I'll just go back to the way it was without a turbo. Like I said, I've, I've done this for a while. And it does work, it's just that the car's slow, but maybe slow, but it's not going to have any turbo failure if the turbo is not even, you know, activated properly. So the problem you get <coughs> with this turbo is you get crappy performance. It uses up loads of engine oil and it spews it out the back of the car, so <coughs> it's not ideal. And eventually you lose power, so yeah, it's just a nightmare. Now this should come off here. There we go. That plate thing's off. And you get all the insides. I suspect that this is the problem. <coughs> yeah, I suspect that this is the problem. I mean, that's too much play, I imagine. Is that even in properly? Alright, so if you look at this here, this goes into this piece. And you can see that there's enough for uh, a knot, uh, the shaft of a bolt. If you look on this side, you'll see that access is quite tight. So you probably only have maybe five, five mil or something for a bolt head to stick up. Just to show you what I mean, say we have this bolt here and put it in there and then put this over it. I think you'll find that there's not enough clearance, you see? See, it doesn't go in. Is the bolt head sticking out too much? So that's what the problem is. Okay, so I eventually found a bolt. I put two washers on, a copper one and a steel one. You don't want it to damage the the outside, but at the same time, it's got to be thin enough so that you can get the the other piece on top. So flat head, but so that it doesn't press onto this, you know, so it's damaged. Because maybe in the future I want to do the job properly. Anyway, so that's that. <coughs> I've tightened it up. It's nice and tight. I've actually done it too tight, but that's okay. So it stops the hot air from here getting through to this bit here, which is the cold air side. Um, and any oil as well that does get through won't be able to pass. So oil from the middle can't get through either side. Um, hot air can't get into the cold air and cold air can't get into the hot air because that would pass through here which is blocked so that's it well for now there is actually something else really important that you have to do but for now let's put this back together um, so where's the mark so see this bit here so I just leave it like that find the little groove thing here there it is see and then try to put it back together and what you'll find is that it will slot together nicely There we go, and it should move a little bit as well. Can you hear that? The mechanism's working. Now you should find that you'll get markings here where your bolts used to be, so you can see that that needs to go a bit more there. Okay. And that's how you know it's in place. 
Now we just need to bolt it back up. Um, which ones was it now? I think it was, was it, no it wasn't these, it was these ones. These ones here. Bolt that back up. So basically what we've done is we've taken all the insides out. Blank, blanked it off. Um, <coughs> you can actually take this off as well, but I'm not going to. Because then I'll have to cover the oil the oil pipe so that no rubbish gets into the uh, the system. Anyway, <coughs> I've got oil everywhere now. Where's the other bolt? I think it's that. And there should be a washer. Is that it? No, that's not it. Where's the washer? Oh, I know. There isn't a washer because there was that there was that thing on it, wasn't there? So never mind. I'll just. I oh know it looks like it'll have to have a washer. Well, um, yeah, okay, so I need two washers. These are not heavy duty washers, but uh, they'll have to do. One there, and we need one for there as well. Let's do the bolt, there it is. Put these washers and bolts back in. Put that in there. Yeah, looks like that's in. And tighten it all back up. Right, but it's not it yet. <coughs> There's a bit more to go. Tighten that up, tighten everything up. Now, the thing that I haven't told you about at the moment is the banjo bolt. And you need to do something with the banjo bolt, which I'll show you in a minute. Just tighten this up. Okay, so if you look at that now, there's just a big bolt through it. Big bolt straight through it. Okay, so effectively the insides have been gutted. So hot air now, it doesn't spin any impeller or anything like that, it just goes straight out. Now this bit... <coughs> it's a bit straightforward again. Just put the bolts through, the old bolts. Oh, there's a seal on here as well. Yeah, the seal's already there, so that's good. Let's screw this in. And the other bolts. It's a messy job, this. Look at all the oil. A bit annoying though, really, because it shows that <laughs> that it actually wasn't blocked and the, you know, I don't know what was up with my turbo, I think maybe there was some air leak or something like that. Anyway, tighten these up. Still, I don't regret doing this operation because it's fully reversible. And right now I just want the thing to work. I don't want to be driving around and it breaking down at some point. I just need it to work. Okay, it's getting tight. Looks like that's it. Right, there's another seal to go on now. So that's how it looks anyway, that's how it looks. So, if you remember, 
impala thing, whatever it's called, used to sit on there and spin around. Okay, so that's on. Next is this thing. Um, that goes on there. Sometimes it flicks off, so it might be easier to put it on the other way. Let's see if it's going. Is it going to flick off? Oh no, it's held. Now, this thing. That's the bottom there. That's the top. And this goes this way. Like like this, and again you've got little guides. You've got you see where the bolts are. You've got little marks to show where they are. And I think actually if you rotate it, they they don't line up. So yep. Next they can go on. With these little things. The eight mil um, bolts. Oh, that's not cross threaded there. It's not. Hmm, something's going on with that. Let's go to the next one. That one's going in okay. Yeah, so there's something I've not told you about yet, and uh, it's coming. It's to do with the banjo bolt. Basically, you have to do something to the banjo bolt to stop oil flowing. Now, there's no reason really, if it's fully blocked off, why you couldn't just let the the oil flow through, but why why would it you know why would you want it to flow through the turbo when it doesn't need to i mean i guess you could but it just stops leaking doesn't it if there's no oil flowing through the turbo then it can't leak oil so i'll show you what i've done with that in a minute where's the other bolt there it is And tighten them up, this is the 8mm one. That's it. Tighten this up. What you should find that one bolt will pinch it in place as well, so you know, so that it can't rotate anymore. So if you get it a little bit wrong then the air intake thing uh, doesn't fit properly. <clears throat> so one more or two more? Yeah, you see some scar marks there from when I, uh, <clears throat> when I originally took this thing off. <clears throat> When I originally took it off, I used the grinder on that bit, you see, because for whatever reason I couldn't get it off. Anyway, so, that looks about right to me. Or is it? Hmm, seems about right. That gets bolted onto the engine, then goes there. Seems about right. Right now, that's going to go on there. We should, probably you should get a new one, but uh, I'm not. Now this is another important bit. Just pick these bits up. You don't need to bother with this anymore. For me that's going to go into storage, that actuator thing. Now this bit, this bit does matter. Now, a banjo bolt here, oil comes in through something that attaches to this, like a tube thing that goes around. Oil gets pumped through this little hole and it comes out of the middle of the bolt. But what I've done I've got an M4 bolt, threaded it in, well not threaded it, but forced it in, and I've cut the end off, and then reversed it actually as well. So, I don't know if I can get this, 
bring this out to show you, but uh, it is literally just a bolt. No, I don't think I can get it out to show you, but it, it's just a bolt. So I've closed this off with a bolt, you see there? So the oil can no longer get through. It's blocked. And that's how I stop the oil getting into this. But if you think about it, it's not the end of the world anyway. Because nothing needs oiling, nothing spinning. And if any oil did get in, I'm hoping that it wouldn't be able to get past the washers anyway. And uh, if any did get into the centre, it would drip straight out into the return. So that's what I, that's what I do. That's how I've got around it. Okay, so that's how to do it. So now I'm going to go and fit it to my car, and I'll show you it uh, revving up, hopefully. See you in a minute. So here are the bits. The impeller things, whatever they're called. And there's the, well, actuator, I guess it's called. You can see there that there's no actuator. No oil spilling out. But it will also be gutless, like it won't it won't rev up properly. Like it well it will rev up but it won't be very powerful now. But at the same time you're not gonna get turbo failure. 